After the Boston Tea Party, King George sent thousands of British soldiers to Boston to make sure the colonists obeyed the king's orders, or to make sure the colonists did as the king ordered them to do. They swarmed the streets of the city in their fancy red uniforms with shiny buttons, earning themselves the name Redcoats. They carried weapons with them everywhere they went. This made the people of Boston very angry. The city no longer felt like home to them. They did not know whom to trust spies or people who secretly kept watch on other people to try to figure out what they were up to. Spread out all over the city, British soldiers disguised as colonists and colonists disguised as British soldiers. There was lots of whispering in the streets as people kept secrets from one another. It was not very pleasant and even a little scary. Paul Revere was a silversmith living in Boston. As a silversmith, he was kept quite busy making and repairing silver dinnerware. Candlesticks and jewelry. A sign with a silver pitcher hung outside his shop on the town square. One day, the door to his shop flew open, and a friend rushed over to Revere's side. The two men were both members of the Sons of Liberty, the group of patriots who had emptied tea into Boston's harbor. Ever since the Boston Tea Party, the colonists of Massachusetts. Had been hiding weapons, gunpowder, and cannonballs in neighboring towns. The British, afraid the colonists might be planning to attack them, captured the weapons whenever they learned where they were hidden. Now, as the two men huddled together in the back of Revere's shop, his friend whispered that the British were planning to raid the colonists' storehouse of weapons in the town of Concord. The British were to travel that night, he said. But nobody knew whether they would march there by land or choose the shorter route and sail on a boat by sea. The patriots knew they must somehow warn the militia in Concord that the British were coming by sea. A militia is an army of ordinary people, not trained soldiers. Revere and others spied on or secretly watched over the British to discover the soldiers' plans. When Revere learned the troops were coming by sea, he arranged for a signal to be given—a secret code. His friend was to climb up the bell tower of the old North Church, light one lantern, and hang it in the belfry or bell tower. If the British are traveling on foot by land, Revere told his friend. But if they are traveling on a boat by sea, hang two lanterns. Paul Revere left his family and crept down to the banks of the Charles River. He quietly crossed the river in a boat to a spot where he borrowed a horse from his friend and fellow patriot. Paul Revere mounted the horse, tipped his hat in thanks to the patriots, and sped away. As he galloped through towns along the way, Revere shouted to the colonists in their beds, "The redcoats are coming! The redcoats are coming!" All around him, shutters were thrown open as people began waking in the middle of the night. When Revere reached the town of Lexington with word of the approaching British troops, men hurried from their homes, joining one another with their muskets in the middle of the town. These men, known as the Minute Men because they were expected to be ready to fight at a minute's notice, slept with their muskets and gunpowder beside their beds. Revere was joined by a second rider, William Dawes, who had been sent on the same mission, but following a different path to Lexington. At dawn, the British reached Lexington. The Minutemen were farmers and shopkeepers, volunteers for their country, not trained soldiers. Volunteers choose to do a job without being paid. They looked so ragged next to the well-dressed British soldiers or redcoats. In the confusion of the early morning hours, a shot was fired. Others fired back, and fighting continued throughout the morning. Finally, Minutemen were able to force the British to return to Boston, firing at them from behind rocks, trees, and fences all along the way. To this day, no one knows who fired the first shot that day. 
Nerves had been on edge since the Boston Tea Party, so it's not surprising that guns went off. That first shot was the beginning of a long war between the British and their American colonies. It is known as the shot heard round the world because not only did it change life in the colonies, but it also changed things around the world in Great Britain, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. This famous saying does not mean that they actually heard the shot. It simply means that the shot had a big effect on Great Britain and on the entire world. That long war became known as the Revolutionary War. Could it be that the shot heard round the world rang out so loudly from the Massachusetts colony that it actually reached King George's ears that April morning? No, but the effects certainly did.